a common suggestion when running a web server or any other sort of production system in a Linux context is use some sort of LTS release. And generally this is a really good suggestion. You're gonna keep getting security patches, but you don't have the issue of worrying about rolling updates from a distro like Arch, for example. But Google decided, you know what? We don't like that idea. Let's do something a little bit different. Let's use a rolling release based on Debian. Because if we're going to use a rolling release, let's do it in the weirdest way possible. And this was explained in a blog post titled, How Google Got to Rolling Linux Releases for Desktops. The project is titled GLinux Rodet. And before we can discuss that, we need to talk about how we actually got here and why they even wanted to use a rolling release. So Google does a lot of different work. And for a lot of those different things they're doing, whether it's porting apps to different systems and things like that, they need to be using different operating systems. Obviously, Android and Chrome OS, you know, the things they actually make, but also Windows, Mac, iOS, and obviously Linux as well. Now, to make sure they have the most control of their Linux distros possible and are not being, you know, screwed around by different distros just changing things, they manage an internal distro. And up until 2018, that distro was based on Ubuntu LTS. Now, as you do with any sort of Ubuntu release, you take Ubuntu, you chop off a letter, and you stick some letters on the front. So the name of it was Gubuntu. G-O-O, Ubuntu. Now, the LTS model did have a benefit. For the over 100,000 Linux systems they had deployed, they had two plus years of guaranteed security patches. That's great. The problem, though, is what happens after the two plus years. Now you have 100,000 devices that need to be updated. And many of these machines weren't just stock installs, so it took a lot of time to reinstall and customize them, and it just was a massive, massive stressor for the company. The other major problem is when you go two and a half years without any major updates, two and a half years of major updates all happen at the exact same time. So this leads to a lot of things breaking. Config layouts might have changed, options might have changed, different acceptable values, maybe options are moved into different options, maybe they're just not existing altogether and now they're just a default or maybe a launch option, maybe APIs have changed, and basically all of this stuff breaks at the exact same time. Now it's not like they had absolutely no idea what was going to be in the next LTS. All of this is made very public, so you can actually prepare. And what they did is basically had an automated testing process which would compare the way their configs and everything else works right now with the way it's going to need to work in the future. And if there are problems, then they can automatically address the problems. This would deal with most common problems but it wasn't a perfect solution. If things got deprecated or unexpected things happen, well, yeah, there's not much you can do. Someone has to manually deal with it. Now, employees would typically have their systems be automatically updated. There was no need to manually go and set stuff up, which was great. But upgrading the entire fleet still took the better part of an entire year, leaving the team completely burnt out, with the other problem, you've just spent a year of your LTS upgrading to the next LTS. Now you only have a year left. Plus, there was the big issue of special case machines. Machines which, in some cases, took several years to upgrade. Sometimes users just wouldn't upgrade their system. And sometimes a machine was just completely forgotten about. It was existing under some desk somewhere. Everybody forgot about it. It was part of some critical pipeline and was running like two or three versions of Gubuntu out of date. So in comes the solution. A far quicker, far smaller, but far less breaking update cycle. So GLinux Rodet stands for Google Linux, GLinux, Rolling Debian Testing. You take the first two letters from each word, Rodet, Rolling Debian Testing. So testing is one of the extra branches of Debian that you're typically not going to use if you're a regular user. So you use the stable branch of Debian, but there is also unstable and testing. Now, unstable is where things first go. That's where things haven't really been tested at all, and they're just being thrown in there 
on their way to be tested. When they are getting tested, then they are in testing. And then once they have been tested, then they will make their way over to stable. But because of the way that updates come into testing, it's not just like, hey, these are the testing updates for Debian 9 or Debian 10. Things are going to be constantly rolling into that. And if you want to, you can use it as a rolling release, but you probably shouldn't. And Google knows this, so they had to do some extra things to make it a good idea. Now, many distros were considered, but Debian was ultimately settled on. But why Debian? And why not an actual rolling release like Arch, Void, or if they were insane and wanted to waste all their time, even something like Gentoo. So one of the big reasons is that Debian has a large community. So if any of their developers, any of their engineers needed help with anything, there was already this massive audience of people who were already using Debian. And the other major reason is a smooth in-place migration. So while Debian and Ubuntu are very different distros, Ubuntu is built from packages available on Debian. So most of the packages on Ubuntu are probably on Debian as well. Now it's definitely not one to one, but it's much easier to patch up a couple of holes here and there than rebuild an entirely new boat. And the other big reason is Google had a lot of internal tooling and it was packaged in apt because that's what they were using. So if they use something else, they would have to go and repackage all of their tooling again. And also packages roll out generally quick enough. Usually within a couple of days of upstream, it's made its way over to testing. This does slow down in one situation though, around the release of a new stable Debian, because if the stable release is being worked on, there's no point to keep testing new packages that can be slowed down until after the release is available. So just for that period, it's slow, but it's only every couple of years and it's not that long of a period. Now you've probably noticed the pretty glaring problem here. Rolling out daily packages to one system is perfectly fine and doable, but still bad enough to deal with. Rolling it out to a hundred thousand systems sounds like an absolute nightmare and an absolute problem waiting to happen. But they're not actually using rolling release in the truest sense of the term. Now it is rolling in a sense, but what it's actually doing, it's a static point release that is at a much more frequent release cycle. So what they do is take weekly snapshots of Debian testing and then roll out that snapshot. So basically it is a static release with a weekly rather than, you know, a two yearly cycle. But there's also the problem that testing is still not meant to be used in production. So what they need to do is run internal testing on every single package and then anything where there are issues, whether it's bugs or things not working the way they should be, they actually go and report them upstream up to Debian and if they can, actually go and address the problems themselves. So by Google using Debian, it actually benefits the rest of the Debian sphere, whether that's Ubuntu or anything else based on it. But testing can only do so much. At some point, it has to go into production. So before the weekly releases get rolled out to the rest of the fleet, it's first rolled out to 1% of the system. So about a thousand different systems. These are the canary testing systems. If anything goes wrong with these, then it's pulled, it's going to be fixed. And then once it's working, then it'll be rolled out. If everything is going well within a couple of days, it then gets rolled out to the rest of the fleet. So generally the rest of the fleet is running like one or two versions behind. Now when we're talking about migrating a hundred thousand systems from one distro to another one, it's not like you can just go and download the ISO and then start working on it one by one. That is a completely impossible feat. So this was a multiple year process to get everything migrated. It all started in 2015, a year into Ubuntu 14.04. So the first thing you need to do is make the process basically as simple as possible. So it took about a year to develop GLinux Rodet, and then in 2016, rather than going straight into rolling into new releases, what they did 
is froze it basically as in line with Debian Stable in 2016. Now this frozen point and any of the releases going forward is referred to as the baseline. And to make the migration as easy as possible, you want it to be very similar to what you're currently using to reduce the amount of things you actually need to change. And it turns out that Debian in 2016 was very similar to the current state of Ubuntu 14.04. This process and in-place migrations took about two years to complete. But now we have a bit of a problem. So we just froze Debian for two years and everything in the fleet is now running a version of Debian that is two years out of date, which is exactly where we started. So from there, they started a team-wide effort to catch up to the latest version of Debian testing. And by early 2019, any of the leftover Ubuntu machines, which couldn't just be upgraded in place, were finally dealt with. And by this point, the baseline was only 250 days behind, a little bit less than an entire year. From there, they kept optimizing the update cycle and making sure everything is tested and jumping ahead as quickly as they possibly can. And by mid-2020, they finally caught up with Debian, basically in time for Debian Bullseye's release. From then on, they've continued to improve the process and actually want to get ahead of Debian, and that's their plan by 2023. Now, obviously, this model is not doable by most companies. This is doable because Google has too much money and too many really, really intelligent engineers. But now that they've done it, they are fully in control of the entire distro and everything that's happening on it. And there's not going to be anywhere near as many unexpected changes being made. Obviously, far more updates are required now, but there is far less overhead in actually getting them done. If you are at all interested in managing Linux at scale, I highly recommend you actually go and read the blog post yourself. I've basically cut it down into a, you know, viewable video form, but it's quite a long blog post and there's quite a bit of extra, you know, in-depth information that might be of interest to you. So go and check it out and let me know what you think. I went to the wrong screen. Anyway, if you like this video, uh, comment, let me know, all that fun stuff, and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and bear pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.